Welcome. Let's talk about media and communication. And for this episode, I have invited Samuel Negredo to explore how Spanish digital news outlets are using e-commerce to make money. And you might be surprised to learn that, well, some news outlets are selling products and services online, not just traditional newspapers. And in this episode with Samuel, we explore how common this is, uh, what kind of things they're selling, and whether this shift towards online sales is well, a good thing for journalism. Samuel, welcome to our episode. Hi, Rodrigo. Samuel, you and your colleagues indicate in the study that, well, there hasn't been a comprehensive study on how digital news outlets are using e-commerce. So that's that's what drove you? Yes, uh, traditional advertising revenue is insufficient to sustain digital news organizations. Therefore, the purpose of a study is to examine alternative revenue streams for news outlets with a focus on this potential of e-commerce as a viable income source, besides uh, other income sources that people may know about, such as display advert advertising, sponsored content, subscriptions, memberships, consultancy, events. Uh, there are many of them, no? but uh, e-commerce can be one of them. As part of the Diginative Media Project funded by the Spanish government and the European Regional Development Fund, we built a database uh, of 2,862 active editorial sites in Spain, and we have been looking at how they are funded in and what we think is the first comprehensive study of this kind. Well, perfect. So promising uh, start. So what are the main findings, conclusions of your study? What did you find? Well, we found that approximately 12% of digital news sites in Spain of all sizes, big and small, uh, use some form of e-commerce as a source of revenue. But there are differences between the different kinds of digital news outlets. In Spain, e-commerce is more commonly employed by online media that are not digital native, but rather media that have offline roots, such as in broadcast or print, the so-called legacy media. The difference is that 9%, only 9% of digital native media uh, use e-commerce as a source of revenue, whereas 14% uh, of uh, legacy news sites, uh, legacy sites with traditional roots, use this kind of revenue stream. Also, uh, focusing on the geographical scope of coverage of the media, we found that Spanish national media outlets are more likely to use e-commerce than hyperlocal, local or regional sites. E-commerce is present in just 2% of hyperlocal sites, which is very little, nearly 9% of local or regional sites, and close to 20%, this is one in five, among national or international news sites based in Spain. And finally, uh, specialized news media outlets are more likely to use e-commerce than uh, general news sites. The results are that approximately 15% of specialized news sites covering a specific topic use e-commerce as a source of revenue. This is a little less than 10% for mm -hmm. a general news sites. We understand that the targeted audiences of specialized media brands are more receptive maybe to specific e-commerce offerings such as fashion, travel, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of, uh, of, uh, of of elements that they can buy for specific purposes related to the outlet's coverage. So these are the differences that we have found uh, among these 2,862 uh, digital news outlets that uh, we found in Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, and in spite of those differences, um, I would like to know more about practical implications of this. And in your study, uh, you mentioned uh, some blurred lines and trust issues perhaps prioritization of sales over quality, over trust, and some potential reputational damage. So can you explain it more about potential implications of your study, of your findings? Yes, uh, we find, we found, and we think that with these findings, the, the outcome for smaller sites that have a less diversified portfolio of income sources may be positive if they manage to uh, find business partnerships without losing the focus of their main editorial purpose, of course. We think that digital news outlets need to diversify this, their income streams through a mix of all these income uh, sources no, uh, that we have studied. 
uh, and in a close-up of 25 legacy media sites and also nine digital native sites uh, that also have a, a high, a large audience volume, we found that legacy media, even within e-commerce, offer a broader range of options, such as uh, online shops, which is the first kind of e-commerce that we that comes to mind when we, th when we think about this way to, to add uh, revenues to the company, to the news media company, but also affiliate marketing, which is one of the easier ways to incorporate e-commerce to a news organization, coupons, discount codes, promotional editorial collections, own brand merchandise for supporters, tickets for events, and even a travel agent service. Travel agent service that can be useful for, especially, of course, uh, companies, news media organizations focusing on that, that, that kind of content. No? Mm -hmm. So we think that all these opportunities, if um, a clear barrier, a clear disclosure is made about what content is commercially driven mm -hmm. and what content is editorially driven, is something that uh, almost all organizations can profit from because uh, our main idea is that society needs a robust and independent press and uh, this means that they need to have financial sustainability. Mm -hmm. So if they manage to be transparent to their users, then they can manage to incorporate e-commerce without causing reputational damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's ahead of us to do research about more comprehensive studies about these financial uh, opportunities, uh, this separation that you just mentioned? So what's ahead of us now? Yes, our study is descriptive. Therefore, it cannot track uh, the evolution about uh, um, a long time, for example. And there would be a possibility to assess the financial impact of mm -hmm. these sources of revenue. No? What's the weight of traditional advertising, subscriptions, these kinds of e-commerce, also other side businesses that media companies may, may have. And a dimension that could be explored related to your previous question, Rodrigo, has to do with audience perceptions and the effect of e-commerce on journalistic credibility yeah. uh, due to conflicts of interest. No, this is something that maybe has been explored uh, in the areas or, or is being explored currently by some of our colleagues in the area of fashion, for example, or more generally outside news organizations in the area of uh, social media influencers no, and how their content is driven by these commercial partnerships. Um, as a summary, I think that future research uh, should aim to incorporate these longitudinal data, data you know, to see how uh, the use of e-commerce is, is evolving. There are also, as we know in this, in this field, uh, very large uh, actors which are outside the field of uh, media organizations or that are becoming media organizations themselves, no, not in the news business, but in the content and entertainment business, such as Amazon, for example, AliExpress, Shein, etc. And uh, uh, we understand that uh, e-commerce is a venture where there are, as in so many other fields of technology, very big, very large international actors uh, that have a big chunk of the market, a big, a big mm -hmm. size of the market, and of course, uh, e-commerce offerings can either be through affiliate marketing and uh, in that sense, it may be like an additional or complementary uh, source of revenue for the sites, or it may be very tailored to the specific area, the geographic area or the uh, theme area that the news outlet is, is covering. But I think we need to find uh, out about the financial implications, the evolution over time, and also the audience perceptions about uh, e-commerce as the source of revenue for digital news outlets. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm, I'm going to ask you to be now, well, a bit critical about your research, because for me, in spite of the differences that you mentioned, I was personally intrigued by the 12% uh, adoption rate of commerce, probably small, I don't know, but it's just one of the funding uh, opportunities that are out there. And also uh, struck me well some ethical concerns, we've been talking about this, that might arise from these practices. But what are your thoughts uh, on your study? Well, yes, definitely only a small fraction of the Spanish online news outlets that we studied ventured into e-commerce. Mm -hmm. um, and we think this, is, this has potential for further uh, growth. Yeah. Um, we found that there are 
publishers that own a large number of titles, tens of titles, either uh, focusing on uh, very diverse niches of content or otherwise networks of uh, national networks of regional or local media no, that may provide um, joint solutions or joint uh, tools for the, all these sites to provide a, a joint offering of e-commerce. Mm -hmm. But the, of course, in, in any country, in digital media, there is also a lot of fragmentation. There are media uh, which are publicly owned you know, by local or small regional corporations that may not have uh, this commercial purpose uh, uh, so clearly defined. Or in many cases, the business side of digital media outlets may not be as developed as the editorial side. So uh, I understand that this is also a challenge. You no, know? And from the perspective of publishers, uh, this may be also something to explore. You know? uh, what's driving them to use e-commerce uh, in this uh, close-up of 25 legacy sites and nine uh, digital native sites, we also found uh, when we were uh, analyzing uh, outlet by outlet the different kinds of e-commerce that they had put into practice that some of these opportunities had been launched and then abandoned. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they were using the digital news outlets brand, but they were not very closely aligned with the news organization. No, And maybe... Uh, it was a bit of its values, no? Because maybe um, the contents that were being sold or the products and services that were being sold uh, were associated to the brand uh, nominally, but uh, were something that could be found anywhere, no? Mm -hmm. So I think this is a challenge, definitely, that uh, the new sites that offer e-commerce can incorporate that into the uh, editorial identity of their brand. So definitely that's a challenge for them. And all the different actors, the publishers, the users, even the technological companies or the e-commerce companies offering these solutions are uh, agents that uh, can be further explored. Mm -hmm. The trickiest part of this episode now, uh, Samuel, if you had to sum up the conversation in one or two sentences, what would it be? Well, Rodrigo, a society needs a robust and independent press. Mm -hmm. And the several ways how online news organizations may incorporate e-commerce as a source of revenue with all the precautions, uh, without losing their editorial focus, may help them achieve financial sustainability mm -hmm. and therefore remain independent, while maybe also providing additional services to their users. So there are very many ways how e-commerce can be incorporated. And uh, we trust that this can be a way uh, in this hard challenge for digital news organizations to achieve financial sustainability. This can be one of the ways how they can reach it alongside display advertising, subscriptions, events, uh, consultancy services, and all the different ways how a digital news business can be developed nowadays in 2024. Perfect. Well, Samuel, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. For those who are watching us on YouTube, in the description, you can find all the resources of this conversation, the study that Samuel uh, just shared, uh, the findings, uh, and also the link to the Let's Talk About Media and Communication website, and all the information you need to follow up on Twitter, uh, subscribe to the newsletter, and uh, find our podcast platforms. <laughs>